So we're here at SEER tonight at the Dallas Sommelier Society, and I'm delighted to interview Luisa Rocca from Bruno Rocca, one of the most famous Barbaresco producers in the world. Luisa, um, I've got a, a few questions for you about Barbaresco. Perhaps I could start by asking you, what is it that makes Barbaresco so famous and so special a wine? So, um, nice, nice to meet you and good evening everybody. So, I'm Luisa Rocca and I think that the Barbaresco is so special because of course of our lands, our territory and but also because of the great people that are behind the, the bottles that are all the winemakers that work every day in them, in them property and then feel for uh, extract the best from uh, them soils and, and and the best that these wonderful varietals can give. And uh, we, I know that your wines are available in town. I know that you did a tasting earlier tonight at Jimmy's, the famous Italian um, wine and food store here in Dallas. And um, if somebody buys your wines, then how many years can they keep them uh, before they're, they're too old to drink? Yes, it depends on the on the vintage and depends on how in the way you keep it and depends on the cork. But um, well, a bottle of Barbaresco it's famous for the kind of long aging. So um, it depends also on uh, on, the, on your taste. I mean, on the customer taste. Uh, uh, if you prefer wines much more with some body, with something, um, some tannin, some structure. So I suggest between 10, 15 years. Uh, if you want something much more smooth, much more smooth, um, um, go up on 20, 30, 40 years. That's, it's up to you. That's a long time. Uh, a friend of mine bought a bottle tonight at Jimmy's. It was in 2006. Yes. If he, if he opens that on Saturday for his dinner, okay. um, how many hours in advance should he open it to let it breathe? So. I think if he, if he open it in the morning, late morning, and for the night, for the dinner time, it's gonna be perfect. And what what would you recommend he serve it with? Oh well, a barbresco it suits very well with a very important meat, like um, brasato or um, some uh, heavy meat uh, or with or wild meat as well, uh, but also with the cheese. Great. And um, uh, the grape that uh, Barbaresco is made from is Nebbiolo, yes. which has done very well with Barbaresco and Barolo, both of which are in Piedmont yes. in northern Italy. But it, the, that grape has not grown well elsewhere. What, why do you think it hasn't been possible to grow it successfully in other countries? Uh, I don't understand about the Nebbiolo one. Yes. Why is not growing successfully in the other country? Yes. Because it's a very delicate variety. I mean, it's very, uh, it's not suit all the terroir. Also, um, that is also the reason why the, the rules of how make Barbaresco, so the DOCG rules, uh, it says also the perfect altitude. You cannot grow Nebbiolo under a, a kind of altitude or upper another kind of, another altitude. I mean, you can grow Nebbiolo, but it's not recognized as Barolo or Barbaresco. So this is really the real meaning that there is uh, just a place where the, the, the Nebbiolo, it gives the, the best expression. Wonderful. And I, I know that it's early this year in the harvest, but how does it look so far, the 2013? So, for see how it's a look uh, harvest, you must to see my father. So I saw him this morning in Skype and he was very happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we did already the Chardonnay mm -hmm. and the Dolcetto. We, it was done before that I left for Italy, before I gone. And um, they did the uh, Barbera and they are doing the Nebbiolo and it's going very good. So, uh, very well. So I'm happy, I'm glad I'm keeping for cross finger, the <laughs> finger cross, uh, so I suppose that this we can, we, we, will, we, we will have a very good 2013. So. Luis Soroka, thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you.